Hi, I'm Glenis Mills, and I'm leader of Women's Apostolic Alliance. I'm a prophet, and uh, tonight we've got different prophets speaking, and uh, it's God's heart for Australia. And this is his word for Australia from each of us. And um, so I just want to pray first, and we're going to commit this to you. Lord, I thank you for the nation of Australia. I thank you that your hand is upon it. I thank you, Lord, that you know the plans that you have for Australia. And Lord, we're on the cusp, Lord, and I know there's an urgent warning in this word. And I just pray, Father, that you will just, uh, your words will go out, Lord, and that, that your words will uh, bring life and light and, and also bring a warning. And uh, Lord, you, you, Australia is on your heart at this time and there are many things happening and we are seeing that um, Christianity is dying and that uh, it seems like the opposite is rising up. And, uh, but we are going through growth pains, we're going through pains and we're going through a pivotal time and it's actually a really strategic time right now. And so I just really want to issue a warning and I just want to just um, so Father, I just thank you for Australia. I thank you that, Lord, your hand is upon this nation. And, Lord, there's this word, Lord, there is an urgency and there is a, this is an urgent word, it is a warning word, and it is one, and it's one to the church because the churches need to wake up in this hour. Now is the time. There is an urgency and we need to actually not sit down and just um, settle. And there's been a settling and we haven't actually seen what's happened. And it's a, it's a disappointment, but it's also something that now that we need to really be on the, uh, on the offensive, on the attack, and we need to not bow down now to the enemy and his schemes. And so we have an enemy, and it's not hidden anymore, it's actually in our faces. And so we need to now start to take that ground that he has had. But I want to issue a warning, and it goes back to a word that the Lord actually showed me on the 1st of January 2010. And I just want to bring understanding to it because it's actually quite a serious word and it is an urgent word because it has unleashed something in the spirit. And unfortunately the church has been asleep and not realised what's happened. But I, I will just share what's happened well, in this dream and what I saw and what the Lord is saying. And so it was on January the 1st, 2010 and um, there's a, the Sydney uh, fireworks in the Sydney Harbour and uh, there was a a huge firework display and on the, one of the pylons it had emblazoned Awaken the Spirit and I got really um, distraught about that because I'm going, Lord, what's happening? It was, it was actually an awakening of uh, ungodly spirits that were unleashed this night and it was an actual declaration that was actually declared over Sydney but also over this nation on this, on this night and so the spirits that were awakened were actually the 12 languages of the leading nations of the population in Sydney. But it was, its um, foundation was sounded all right, it was to emphasise the sense of community, acceptance and unity. And the 12 languages that were represented that had awakened the spirit, the languages were English, Gadigal, Arabic, Cantonese, French, Greek, Hindi, Italian, Korean, Russian, Samoan, Spanish, Dutch, Vietnamese and Swahili. As I say, it seemed right because it encouraged the cultures of these people. However, a line was crossed where we were not only embracing these people, but as we said, awaken the spirit. We were actually awakening the cultures of these nations and the false gods attached to these nations. And so we were acknowledging the gods that these nations served. And so we were invoking the spirits of the dead. And so when it had emblazoned on the pylon, awaken the spirit, we need to ask ourselves which spirit were we awakening? Which spirits of, the, of these nations were we invoking? Because it was not the Holy Spirit, that's for sure. Clearly, what had been awakened had been asleep. In other words, had lied dormant for a time. And as of this night, it started to stir and come to life. That is a warning that this night spirits were stirring up and there was an awakening of them and there was, it was a defining, changing time for this nation as these spirits were unleashed. It's interesting to note that the fire, fireworks went for 12 minutes, that there were 12 nations and their languages, they were shown that night, were 12. 
12 is the number of government, and government is about rulership, leadership, authority, and positioning. And this night, a false government was set up. This night, the nation invoked the false gods and the false religions of these nations and called down their deities. The result was a war wrong government, a wrong rulership and authority and positioning that was brought forth. The door of evil had been released over Australia and it happened on our watch. This is not an opinion, my opinion. This happened in the ushering in of a new year and a new decade. And as we know, things have changed in this last decade. And so this was a catalyst for something to be unleashed in the spirit. And it happened on our watch and we were asleep. What happened is an abomination in God's sight. He is grieved by the actions that took place. And he's even more grieved as now we are not a blessed nation. We are not a blessed nation. Because this night, the Lordship of Jesus Christ was challenged. There was a contending and a warring in the spirit over the rulership of this nation. There was a contending and a ruling and wanting to claim ownership over this nation. And ownership was to take a legal right and legal ground. And because we were asleep, because the body of Christ was asleep, it opened the door for this to be unleashed. And it is an abomination in God's sight. What will happen as a result? We're going to see tribal infighting. We haven't actually seen it yet to the degree it's going to manifest in times ahead. There is going to be tribal manifesting and, and infighting happening among the, between and among the Aboriginal tribes. There's going to be tribal warfare happening between the different cultural groups. And there's going to be, it's going to be in the spirit, but it's going to be unleashed and come out onto the streets and come out into the cities in this nation, into the townships of this nation. We are seeing it now, and this is only the beginning. And as, as things change and as, as evil increases, and if the church does not wake up and make a stand and, and repent, then this will happen more and more, and we will see it, and it is taking place on our watch because we have come in agreement with the enemy. And this has brought about, actually, a false unity. They have linked hands, and there's false spirits and false religions have linked hands, and they have built a stronghold. It has actually uh, deafened us, blinded us, and actually has dulled us. And so we are not sharp. And I wondered sometimes why the prophets haven't been sharp in past times. I think the spirit and the stronghold and this principality has landed over this nation and it has blinded us, it has blocked our ears and it has actually blunted us and blunted our words and we have now bowed to and come into a prophetic and the prophet speaking words that only that are, are, are peace, peace and are, are, um, encouraging, blessing words which we need. I know that that is still, that is part of um, the Lord's... You know, he wants us to encourage one another through prophecy. However, the prophets, they have taken a middle ground to try and appease and have been complacent and have tried not to offend. And the truth is, because we have been warm and because we have not been sharp, we have actually opened the door and we have not issued the warning. And, we have, and so even tonight, I'm issuing a warning that this is going to unfold even more so in times ahead. And we need to be on the alert. And we as a church need to know how to fight. And we need to know how to take back ground that the enemy has had. And so, you know, it appears peaceful. And there seems to be like a peace. But I tell you what, there is a, a simmering underbelly of discontent that is going to take more ground and it's going to come out more and more. And it's going to be such that we will see open squabbling out on the streets and we are seeing it even now but it is going to manifest in such a powerful way that there is going to be bloodshed and we, we just need to start to wake up to this and actually take and come to that place of repentance because we need to repent for allowing this to happen on our watch for allowing these false gods to take a position on our watch 
to allow these cultures and their, their um, spirits of worship of the dead to take hold because we have become, we are under a, a cloud of death right now and that has put us to sleep and is putting us to sleep and we need to stir and waken. And as the, as the false spirits have been awakened, this is actually a sign for us, the true church, the government, the true government of the church, the fivefold ministers and ministries to actually stir and waken and to come and take their ground and actually be awake and awaken and awaken the church and uh, for the Holy Spirit to move powerfully. But it won't happen unless we repent. And as we see in Jeremiah 10, verse 10, it says, But, and I declare this right now, the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. However, his wrath, at his wrath the earth will tremble and the nations will not be able to endure his indignation. And let me say, the nations will not be able to bear his, endure his indignation. He's indignant at what is happening in Australia. What has happened and what is happening right now. He's indignant at the fact that his people have, um, have, have actually settled and become comfortable and have actually just taken a middle ground and the onus is on us now to actually take our stand and we need to take a stand and we need to warfare. We need to warfare in this time. However, we are actually, this is our condition right now, the church in, in Australia and this is um, a serious thing because scripture warns us about this. It says, everyone is dull hearted without knowledge. Every metal smith is put to shame by an image for his moulded image is falsehood and there is no breath of them, for they are futile, a work of errors. In the time of this, their punishment, they shall perish. We need to know that these false gods, and even the gods that we are seeing being constructed, some gods, you know, we think of gods as statues and things like that, but also, you know, the false gods that there are, and religion, a lot, a lot of religions have false gods. There's a lot of false gods, even ourselves, where we worship uh, look to man to solve our problems, where we look to government to solve our problems. It is still idolatry. It is not taking responsibility and we're looking, instead of looking to the Lord, we're looking to other means to find comfort, to find a false peace. And we have become dull-hearted because of it. We have become blind and we have become deaf. Australia needs God's grace and his mercy right now. He has withheld his judgment. However, the time of blessing is coming to a close. And if the church does not wake up and take a stand and speak for truth and confront the evil that has been released over this nation, then we will lose more ground. We've lost ground already and we're going to lose more ground. Now is not the time to say, she'll be right, mate. There's a whole stronghold of thinking of she'll be right, mate. And the reality is that that brings a, a false um, comfort brings a false security, it brings a false sense of everything's all right. And the truth of the matter is it is not all right. She will be right, mate, that's a stronghold over this nation. She is not right now. Right now. And things are not right. And we don't, you know, we don't need to be blind to see what's happening, but we are blind because we aren't really um, taking it seriously. We're not taking it uh, with the... Uh, and words are cheap. We're not taking the seriousness of it. We're not taking the warning of it. We're not seeing the potential damage that will come because of what's been unleashed, but also because the enemy is increasing in this hour. And so uh, there is such a, you know, there is things happening that are changing the very fabric of this nation. You know, we talk about woke and all the rest, but the very fabric of this nation and even its Christian foundation has been and we know it's happening, has been slowly eroded and eroded and eroded. And the thing is that unless we actually take our place, and let, unless we let the prophet speak and issue the warnings, unless we actually pray and warfare, unless we actually speak out and say, this is not on, not on our watch, unless we actually start to, in our church meetings, not to have the religious meetings, but to actually have time to actually take our swords and wield them and warfare and, and declare the lordship of Jesus Christ and that things are not going to happen on our watch. It's not going to happen on my watch. As long as I've got breath, I will fight for 
for this nation I will fight against the enemy's uh, tactics and his schemes against the very fabric of this nation and I will fight as long as I've got breath for the families, for, for the women of this nation and, and for the men of this nation, for the women to find their place and to be a voice and for the men to, to stand alongside with their women and support them and also for us to all fight for our families, for our children, for our grandchildren. It's not about us. We are so selfish. Lord, forgive us we are so selfish because it's actually about the generations to come. And because we have allowed this unleashing of these false gods, we have brought something and a curse coming down the generations if we don't block and stop the schemes and plans of the enemy that are trying to be unleashed, even at a greater extent. It has already happened, but unless we actually start to get on our knees and humble ourselves, humble ourselves and pray, we will not uh, see what God really wants to release to this beautiful nation with beautiful, amazing people. And so we just need to hear this warning and heed it. And so we cannot stay in a place of apathy and complacency. So the Lord is issuing a, a warning, he's issuing a challenge at this time and he's saying, you know, are we going to stay asleep? Are we going to become complacent? Are we going to stand by and witness all these things happening? and not do and say anything about it. And so, you know, I believe God's heart cry is for us to, to repent and to come to seek him and to come to him and go, Lord, forgive us, forgive us that we have allowed um, this unleashing of false gods where we have turned our backs on you, where there's been idolatry in our own lives. Lord, forgive us, I pray. So, but I want to, this is, a, that's actually a word that I, that the Lord gave me in 2010, but it is actually bringing in um, what is happening today because right now there is a war and there are many voices. There is a war for the voice right now. There is a, we know there is a, you know, the Voice uh, Parliament Act that, every, that there is uh, going to be a vote on at the end of this year. However, the voice is so much more than that. This is about the voice of God's people and more importantly, this is about the voice of the prophets in this hour. And this is about the voice of prophets who will speak and will confront the wickedness, will confront the evil, will confront religious spirits, will confront all that is an abomination in God's sight. There are so many things right now that are an abomination and are grievous to God's heart. And we have hardened our hearts and we have become so dull and we have become so um, complacent that we don't even recognise where evil has taken its place and where it is taking its place. And we need to be on the alert. We need to be on the forefront fourth foot at this time. And so it's interesting that we've got echoing and it's like if we could say a word that's been declared over this nation at this time, it's actually the words, the voice, the voice, the voice. And, um, and so at this moment we're supposed to listen and heed the voice of government that's telling us what we should do to how to vote for the voice and to give the indigenous people of Australia a voice. And we know that there is power in words and the voice that has been spoken and over and over again, this is about a voice but it's actually not about the voice for justice, it's not a voice for righteousness, it is not a voice for mercy, it is not a voice for grace, it is for a voice that is actually calling people out from a place of selfishness, from a place of judgment and hatred, racial prejudice and uh, from a place of uh, one-upmanship and even a place of, to bring increasing division and dissension and strife. And so this voice that has been stirred up is a voice that is, that's foundation is ungodly. And as a church we need to know what is actually happening, that there is an ungodly voice is being unleashed and it actually does go back to 2010 when that when their spirits were awakened because all those voices, all those contendings are now taking place and we wonder why there's a, a, a contending among the tribes, among the indigenous people and there's actually a warring. It's a spiritual thing about who's going to have the most power because this is all about power and control. This is about rulership. This is about govern, government. This is about taking a stronghold. This is about taking a place, an ungodly place. And so we need to know what's happening. We need to be on, we just need to be so awake and we need to actually listen to what has been spoken and what is going out there and see the schemes and plans of the enemy. This, the voice, the voice, it's, and it's actually, it's a, it's, it's a negative, but it's actually an exciting time as well 
because we've got the negative voices, but I tell you what, this is now the time for the voices, the voices of the prophets to come out, the voices of the true prophets to speak, the voices of the true prophets to speak, the warning words to speak what is on God's heart and to cry out and to speak and confront all that is happening right now. And so this is not a negative thing because this is actually a time now for the prophets to take their place, to take their stand and to be that voice. And so this is an exciting thing that is actually happening. And um, i just so mindful that the voice is, you know, we've got a, what voice are we listen, listening to? What voices are we obeying? Because there are so many voices out there. You know, we've got voices from technology, from the television, from all the different ways that it comes at us through the different mediums of technology and radio, etc. But we've got to, we've got to come to a, and find a place where we can all be quiet and actually listen to the voice of the Lord. Listen, what is God saying right now? What is he saying to his church? What is he saying to his people? What is he saying to you? What, what do you carry in God? What voice, what, have, what words have you got that, that he would want you to speak? I want to encourage any that are watching this that are, that are called as prophets or are prophets, what is your voice? What is the words that you are saying right now? You know, what, is, what has God burdened you with? Now, the prophets they have a burden. They carry the burden of the Lord. And, you know, there's many prophets at this time that are carrying a burden for Australia. And it's time for their voices to be heard. And I, I believe that some of this is about a platform that their voices will now be heard. The voices of ones that are issuing a warning. The voices of ones that are saying enough, that uh, we need to wake up. And so... Um, I just want to bring out an interesting fact and I, I, I don't want to speak against him or anything like this, but it is interesting to note that John Farnham that uh, has, uh, can't, has throat issues and can't, hasn't got a voice and you know, we know that his anthem, we, you know, we are the voice and it's like, that is like an anthem over Australia and his prophetic sign, his voice has been snuffed out and so, you know, there has been the voices of the prophets that have been snuffed out and there are voices that need to speak up that have, have um, been shut down or they've been um, blocked and stopped by religion or by ministers or pastors, well-meaning leaders, but even ones, the right voices, even in, in positions of authority have been shut down. And so I'm so grateful for ones that God is positioning right now that their voices will go out and their words will go out. But we need to, we need to know where we are meant to be and where we're meant to be positioned in God. And so this is now an actual time for those voices to be heard. And so, you know, John Farnham and his voice is actually a prophetic picture. He hasn't a voice right now. And so many voices have been shut down. Many prophets have been shut down. We have actually been in a season which I believe that the God actually allowed with COVID and many of, of God's prophets, his true prophets, actually took time aside to seek him and to ask him what his heart was for this nation and his people. And so, you know, I, but I do believe now is the time that, that some book prophet and there some prophetic, I'm going to say prophets, not prophetic, some prophets' voices are going to come out in this next season and they're going to be heard and their voice will not be shut down because the time is short, urgent is the hour and so those voices need to be heard, they need to be heeded and, and the church needs to awaken and receive and listen to what those words are and the voice of those ones that are speaking God's heart and God's burden right now. So, Ecclesiastes uh, 3 verse 7 says, There's a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. This is not the time to keep silent. This is not a time to have love, to love, that is, to love that which is against God. It is not a time of keeping a false peace. It is a time to speak it's a time to hate the things that God hates and it is a time of war. It is a time to speak out. It is a time for warning prophets to speak and it is a time for war. Isaiah 58 verse 1 says, Cry aloud, spare not. 
Lift up for your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their trans- transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. And Mark chapter 1 verse 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. It is time for the voice of the warning prophets to be heard. It is time to sound the trumpet. We are in a war, not a time of peace, not a time of soppy love, but a a time to hate what is an abomination in God's sight. It is a time for those um, John the Baptist type prophets to cry out and say, prepare the way of the Lord. And so there is a voice of one crying out in the wilderness and there have been many prophets that have been in the wilderness and their voice is now coming, crying out, prepare the way of the Lord. And so I just even speak and declare, prepare the way of the Lord. And so we need to prepare. And as prophets, we, those prophets that are called to speak and to warn, it is time for us to uh, speak and call forth and speak out truth and confront that which is wicked and that which is evil and to actually keep prepare the way for the Lord to come back and to make his path straight. And so I just really want to pray right now. I just really feel to just, um, yeah. So Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for truth. I thank you, Lord, that as you prepare the way, Lord, I thank you that your words will go out. Father, I pray, Lord, I just ask that you would forgive us, Lord, where we have been asleep, where we have been complacent, where we, our hearts have become dull, where we have uh, sat down and we have allowed uh, evil to increase, Lord, even where we have allowed wickedness to take hold, Lord, where we have allowed false religions, false idols, uh, false uh, falsehood and just for every false uh, cultural way that is against you and your ways, Lord, and where we have uh, even spoken and declared and, and said peace, peace when there is no peace. And even right now, I pray you forgive your people, Lord, forgive us, your believers, Lord, for, um, for compromising and being apathetic and settling and being comfortable, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you do forgive us. I thank you, Lord, that right now, that Lord, you are stirring. And Lord, as we've had a false awakening in the spirit, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you will awaken your ones, Lord, your, the Holy Spirit of the ones, Lord, that have your voice, have your words in their mouth. Have your, carry your burden, Lord, your true prophets, Lord, ones that will speak and ones that will confront, ones that will war and ones that will be a voice and will be prepared to count the cost. And even right now, Lord, forgive us where we've been dull-hearted, where our ears have been blocked, where our eyes have been blinded. Forgive us, Lord, where we've even had a whole falsehood that has come over us, Lord, and, and blinded us, deafened us, and blocked our mouths from speaking, and even been a muzzle against our throats, Lord, so that we haven't been able to usher those voices and those words, Lord. Lord, I just thank you that you would break that off, the ones that, Lord, you are calling at this time to be your mouthpieces. I thank you, Lord, that, Lord, even as there's been a false voice and a false foundation with the voice, Lord, and false voices are trying to, to try and be who's the loudest voice, and who's got the best words, who's got the most intellectual words and the most prideful words, and Lord, there's a lot of arrogance and there's a lot of uh, fighting over intellectual uh, use of, of words that, um, that are trying to promote the voice on a, from a round, wrong foundation and without the wor- wor- welfare and care of the ones that you care for, Lord, from a place of love, but rather from a place of selfish ambition. So, Lord, I ask that you would just... Awaken us, Lord, that you would awaken your people, Lord, to see what is happening on our watch because we're responsible for what's happening on our watch. And so I thank you, Lord, that you would sharpen us, sharpen your prophets in this hour. Lord, I pray that you would just bring such a Holy Ghost fire upon us that we are unsettled and we have to pray because we are so concerned and we, we have such a heart for this nation that we will weep over it and you will burden us, Lord, those that you want burdened with what you're carrying for this nation. And so I just thank you, Lord, for your your word and your heart. Lord, I pray that things will shift, Lord, even as prophets speak. Lord, things shift in the heavens, and we just pray that things will shift, and particularly, Lord, that it would shift over the prophets that you're calling in this hour, that they would see and that they would carry you and carry your heart, what you want to say and do in this time. And so I just really want to thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing. We thank you that you love this nation of Australia. 
Thank you, Lord, that even though we are in, in tr troubling times and we'll come into troubling times, Lord, I acknowledge, Lord, that this can also be a time for you to move powerfully among your people, Lord, and among those that you're calling in this time to come into your kingdom. And so I just thank you, Lord, that, that you are doing a, a powerful work. And so we, we just uh, give you all honour and praise and glory. And I just thank you, Lord, for, for all that you are doing. And we thank you for this beautiful nation. We thank you for the governments of this nation. And we thank you for the people of this nation. And we thank you for your body of believers in this nation, your church leaders. And we ask for your wisdom and to open their eyes to see. And we just thank you that, Lord, as we stand together, we would be unified and that we would make a stand for what is right and true in this nation and over this nation. In your mighty name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen.